In this video I am going to show you our itinerary to spend 3 days in Paris. If you're not a fan of planning, count me in. I'm here to build a fantastic itinerary that will help you get the most out of Paris. You'll just need to book your flights, your rooms and tickets for those attractions that require advance booking. Don't worry, we've provided the links in the description. Day 1, Musée d'Orsay, Luxembourg Gardens, Montparnasse Tower and Catacombs. The first day of your three-day itinerary in Paris will be packed. Go to bed early the night before and plan to leave no later than 8.30 am for your first visit. You'll visit the Musée d'Orsay, head to Shakespeare and Company, from where you'll end up at the Pantheon, stroll through the Luxembourg Gardens, get the view from the Montparnasse Tower and finish at the Catacombs. You really only need to use public transport to get to your starting point at the Musée d'Orsay and to get from there to Shakespeare and Company, it's a 2 km walk, and back to your hotel at the end of the day. Musée d'Orsay Musée d'Orsay is a rather obvious choice for art lovers, as it has an incredible collection of impressionist art with works of artists such as Monet, Manet, Renoir, Van Gogh and many more. The museum often hosts special exhibitions. Be sure to check the website to see if there are any when you visit, and if there are, plan to spend a little extra time there. I recommend taking a guided tour of the museum, even with an audio guide. Opt for a skip-the-line ticket, it is the best way to avoid queues. In the description you will find the best guided tours and skip-the-line tickets for the Musée d'Orsay. Shakespeare and Company On your way to the Pantheon, you can pass by Shakespeare and Company. This is a quaint, independent Anglophone bookstore in the heart of the Latin Quarter. It first opened in 1951 and since then became a meeting point for English-speaking writers and readers that happened to be in Paris. The building where it is located was originally a monastery. You can browse through books, appreciate the magnificent buildings, attend one of the many events and workshops, although this is a bit difficult if you only have three days in Paris. After this visit, you will head to the next stop, and you will be able to see the Pantheon on the way. The Pantheon. Located on Montaigne Saint Genevieve, the Pantheon is the burial ground of some of France's most notable people such as Rousseau, Voltaire, Marie Curie, Alexandre Dumas, Victor Hugo and Emile Zola. It was built between 1758 and 1790. It was originally a church, but during the revolution it was turned into a mausoleum. Practical information, the Pantheon is open every day from 10 am to 6.30 pm, depending on the season. You can get tickets by clicking on the link in the description. Luxembourg Gardens. The park was built upon orders of Maria de Medici at the beginning of the 17th century. The palace is currently the seat of the French Senate. If you happen to visit during the summertime, you will find it a great place to relax for a bit as you can easily find shade under the many trees. Highlights of the park include the statues of 20 French queens and Medici's fountain. Montparnasse Tower. You won't have much time to explore the Montparnasse district if you only have three days in Paris, but you should definitely climb the Montparnasse Tower for some incredible views. The tower was built in the early 1970s and is now the second tallest building in Paris at 210 meters. It is one of the best places in the city to get views of the Eiffel Tower. Make sure to get tickets to the roof terrace in advance to save some time. The Catacombs. This is a spooky place, located where once was a limestone mine that started being filled with bodies at the end of the 18th century, when local cemeteries couldn't accommodate more bodies. The catacombs are excavated at 20 meters below street level, and there isn't much variation in the temperature throughout the year. I recommend you to book the latest tour of the catacombs, starting at around 5.30 pm. This way, you have plenty of time to enjoy other attractions. Day 2, Eiffel Tower, Arc de Triomphe, Champselises and Tuileries Garden. Something tells me that this day has the potential of being your favorite out of the three days in Paris you will be spending. Eiffel Tower. Let's say you decide to visit only one attraction during your three days in Paris, then there is no doubt, you have to go to the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is the most iconic place in Paris. Built in 1889 for the World Expo, the tower measures 324 meters and until 2004 it was the tallest building in France. It still retains the record for the highest man-made observation deck in Europe, at 276 meters. Get the earliest possible access to climb the Eiffel Tower and factor in around two hours for your visit, from the moment you get there to the time you actually get off. Champ de Mars Champ de Mars Park was first opened in 1780, next to the École Militaire. 
Tourists and locals both love it and head there en masse at weekends or on special occasions, it's a perfect place for picnics and it has incredible views of the Eiffel Tower. Trocadero. In case you are wondering, you got it, today is all about the views. After admiring the Eiffel Tower from Champ de Mars, you can head to Trocadero for even better views. If you can push yourself out of bed, go to the Trocadero for sunrise. There is almost nobody around, you will get incredible photos with nobody in the way. Arc de Triomphe Not only can you walk past the Arc de Triomphe on the Place de l'Etoile, but you can also climb it. The arch was erected to celebrate war victories and pay tribute to the many dead during the French Revolution and Napoleonic Wars. It's an amazing vantage point to get a different perspective of the city. Champs-Élysées The Champs-Élysées run all the way from the Arc de Triomphe to Place de la Concorde. It's a massive boulevard lined with nice boutiques, luxury stores, restaurants and cafes, as well as movie theaters. It's where the Lido, one of the most famous cabaret shows in Paris, is located. Place de la Concorde One of the squares you will come across during your three days in Paris is Place de la Concorde. Paris' largest square is located between the Champs-Élysées and the Tuileries Garden. It was built in 1772, back then it has the name Place Louis XV. During the time of the Revolution it was called Place de la Revolution. Tuileries Garden At the end of the Champs-Élysées and right after Place de la Concorde you will find the lovely Tuileries Garden, probably the most famous park in Paris. The garden was landscaped by Vos le Vicomte, the same who designed the gardens of Versailles. This should give you an idea of how gorgeous this park can be. If you walk their length you will end up at the Arc de Triomphe du Carousel, right outside the Louvre. Before moving on to the third day, we remind you that in the description we provide you with a wide variety of links to book your activities. Day 3, Louvre, Palais Royal, Pompidou, Notre Dame, River Seine Cruise. The third of your five days in Paris will be devoted mainly to the Louvre, the world's largest museum. It will take you hours to explore, in fact, if you have more than three days, I would recommend a full day. The amount of art you'll be able to see at the Louvre is unprecedented. This vast museum was originally a fortress that only later on, the 1700s became an art gallery. It is home to some of the finest paintings and sculptures in the world, including Da Vinci's Mona Lisa and the Winged Victory. The Louvre can get incredibly crowded and it regularly gets sold out, so you absolutely have to purchase your tickets in advance. I also recommend going on a guided tour, at least an audio guide one, so that you can make sense of the many pieces you will be admiring, and of the building which is in itself an incredible work of art. Palais Royal You will love this place. Once the home of Cardinal Richelieu, who lived there until his death in 1642, the palais became property of Philippe II Duke of Orleans, who was holding the throne as Louis XV became king aged five in 1715. Now the seat of the Constitutional Council and the Ministry of Culture, it makes for an interesting visit thanks to the art installation of striped columns of different sizes. Centre Pompidou This is one of the coolest buildings in town. With only five days in Paris, you probably won't have time to actually go inside, but it's worth going to just look at the incredible building which houses the National Museum of Modern Art, Europe's largest modern art museum with works of the likes of Picasso, Matisse, Kandinsky and the lovely square right behind it. Notre Dame You can't go inside Notre Dame, as it was destroyed by a fire in April 2019. Yet, you should at least try to see it from the outside. It still is an impressive sight. River Seine Cruise the best way to finish off an amazing day of exploration is by going on a cruise along the Seine. Keep in mind that most cruises depart from the Eiffel Tower, but look for those that depart from nearby Notre Dame for ease. The cruise is certainly a tourist activity, but the views from there are beautiful. I recommend opting for a sunset or night cruise for an even better experience. This activity is increasingly in demand, so we recommend that you book in advance through the link provided in the description. I hope this video has helped you, don't forget to like us to support the channel and to subscribe to not miss anything.